very proud of our team. Uh, going on the road, have a dominating performance on the road, another step in which uh, I think they really took and very proud of them. Uh, great defense, I thought, played an outstanding game for the second week in a row. Uh, you know, against a team that goes as fast as they go, we talk about the number of plays and things that they do and how fast formation, formation and boundary, I mean, spread empty, I mean, all the different things and, and uh, keeping great leverage on the football, played tremendous run defense. Uh, I, give, I believe gave up 37 yards in the game, kept that down in the quarterback run, which is very tough when you get spread out. Uh, I've been able to get eight sacks, the pressures, big uh, transitional defense. When the turnovers came, uh, one time they scored off, of, off of two, but the rest of the time they stopped and had a big interception in the end zone. Uh, to me, the defense was the, the, the talk of the day. I thought they were outstanding the whole day, pressure and the things in which they did. Offensively, very proud of the way we started the game. Very hot. Uh, come out two straight drives again, very uh, taking it to the field for the practice field. Uh, another big third down conversion the first time in the red zone. It converted to a touchdown, which was huge. Uh, then the next drive was very good. And then we had a couple falters there and a couple of turnovers, uh, uncharacteristic, and then got back on a good drive. And then I uh, came out the second half in the first three times. We got a bang, bang, bang. And had lost momentum in the game just a little bit because of the Hail Mary. The only thing the defense had given up there, we needed to box out in the end zone. The guys were there. They just let the guy slide in front. They needed to box out like basketball. Put him on your hip and drive him out. Go up and get the football. And uh, we work on that, but we just didn't get it done. Uh, but then very proud of the offense to take control of the game. Again, defense came out, made the plays, and we were able to uh, establish the game and do the things we needed to do. Very proud of Dalvin. As I say, broke school rushing record. Now that's over. We can keep playing. And uh, you know, all the other records he has will. And at the end of his career, we'll all go step back and just marvel, in my opinion, of how lucky we were to be able to see him play and be part of it and what he's done for this university. And the most important thing of that is how selfless and such a team player he is. And uh, I'm very proud of DeAndre. He keeps developing in a lot of areas. Uh, very hot in the second half, come out very good on third down again this week and uh, continue to improve. Our kicking game, Ricky came in, hit a big field goal, was very good uh, on that. Uh, punting. Our punt coverage, we've got to cover a little bit. We got out of lanes twice. That was very uncharacteristic. We fixed that, I thought. And, Got out a couple lanes. We got to kick just a little more hang on the ball and uh, get that ironed out. Other than that, we're pretty good. So, but now saying all that, we got to get ready for the Gators. I mean, this is this is a very impressive team when you turn the film on. Defensively, they jump off the screen. Actually, they're top top five in scoring defense and total defense. Uh, from rush to pass, are great front backers. Davis and those guys are so active and athletic. And I got to probably be the first backer drafted. I mean, he is he's one heck of a player. Secondary guys, and they've lost Marcus Main. Those guys, you can't even tell the corners they got back there and Tabor and Wilson and. Uh, all the guys they have, I mean, Harris, we recruit all those guys. I mean, Nick Washington, I and mean, all those guys are just you know, really good players. And the nickels, the dimes, you know, Duke Dawson, those guys are linebacker safeties and can do everything in the world and just a really good team. And uh, offensively, run the football very well, be able to hit big plays, Callaway and the receivers can make it. Quarterback takes care of the football, makes the plays he has to make. Special teams, punter is excellent, kicker is excellent, great return guys. Callaway does a great job returning to win field position battles. Play sound football, take care of the ball. Jim's done a great job with him. We've got a heck of a team. So we're going to have our hands full. Questions? Coach, before we get into the uh, I'm sorry? Uh, you know, I had to get sad in the beginning. <laughs> uh, I mean, Monk was, to me, besides, I mean, what he did for this university as far as the caring, he gave his life for Florida State. He really did. Uh, Everything about the university, what was best for the university, what was best for our kids, and developing the kids and being there for them, and in times of tough need, you know, when they needed tough love, they needed caring. I mean, he he was the epitome of what you want someone when you send your son or daughter to a university that's there to help care for him and make the right decisions and do the right things. He stands for all the right things. He was a real person. Uh, to me, he was a great personal friend, very close personal friend, a confidant. Uh, a lot of personal matters we discussed on both ends, his his and mine, and different things and. And just not to have him to be able to bounce things off of and talk to, and uh, it's a huge loss. I'm not interested in university, me personally. And uh, he's a great friend, and uh, you don't have many of them in this world. And uh, a sad loss for all of us, but we know he's in a better place. And for many people he took care of on this earth, he's definitely been taken care of now. So God bless him and his fan, Bev, and TJ, and Rocky, and God bless him. Jim, when you've had defense of yours, had a really impressive goal line stand. Florida had the other day, everybody gets them. Can you talk about the swing as opposed to maybe getting a turnover at midfield? Because obviously now their offense is standing on your inside your five, and there's an expectation they're going to score. But when you stop them and stop them in the oh, way yeah. you have, so what's a sense of pride and mentality, and then the, the change of emotion in that situation? Well, I mean, I think you go from you're, you're, you're it's almost your. <clears throat> You're playing scared in a weird way. You know you got to get it done. It's not scared from a scared. You're scared that you know, hey, we could lose this football game, 
and I've got to stand up and there's, I got to lay it on the line. I got to give everything I got. And they did that. They had the penetration and got the last play on the stop. And I mean, it, it's a confidence booster. It's a character booster. I mean, everything, uh, everything above. You can say whatever you want to say, but it is a tremendous, tremendous achievement. And it says about their fortitude to win, and their ability to uh, not accept losing. And you know, it's a great tribute to the coaching staff and the players that they stood up and made that play. Those two plays. What's the most memorable one you think your defense has had since you've been here? Uh, we've had a couple of them. The big turnover against Florida down there in the red zone. We had it in the red zone. It wasn't quite on the goal line. We had to flip the game a couple years ago here at uh, Terrence Smith brought back for a touchdown. We've had a couple go on. I'm trying to think. We had a couple. Uh, Clemson. We had a big one against Clemson down here in 2014 when uh, James didn't play. In that game right there, they were on the two, one or two yard line and we got them out and then stopped them a couple times and they got a bad snap. They ended up missing the field goal. I mean, that was a huge game in that 23-17 game. And uh, there's been a couple of them just off the top of my head. Yeah, but what is it about Florida's front that kind of makes them different than other teams you're going to face? Because, yes, you face a lot of top 40 defenses, but of course this one's third total defense scoring. Size, speed, athleticism. <laughs> and then it's very techniques. They're very well coached. Their techniques, their gaps, they know what they're doing, when they're doing it. They're fast, they're strong, they're physical, they got size. I mean, they got everything you want in players. I mean, they recruit as good as anybody in the country. And, uh, they're just a really dominant team. Who on that, who on that group stands out most? To All you? of them. I mean, you know, in the last game, I mean, when you go back to it, Brantley was really, he had two or three plays down the goal line. They couldn't block him when he was there trying to cut him off on the power on the backside. He came through and got four net one time by a three yard loss. Then he pinched one, and then CC came in and got the play on the next to last play, got the penetration off the end. I mean, he does, Ivy is a strong physical guy. Sherrod does a good job. The guys they put in the game behind them all do good jobs. I mean, that instant, they're so, they're, they, I, I say it. Because on the front, when only one guy's good, it's hard to have a great front. I mean, they can be dominant because you can run away and double team one guy. The problem with these guys is you pick one to double team, well, you're singling up everybody else, so you roll your dice. I mean, so it's it's they're good across the front. And the linebacker, I'm going to say that, Davis and them at backer, man, he's, he's a man job. Jimbo, Florida State's never had a 4 no winning streak against Florida and Miami at the same time. That, that would happen. I didn't realize I didn't have any idea. Florida, Florida. That would happen if you guys beat Florida on Saturday. What? When you hear that, what's the significance? Well, I mean, it's not significant now. It's, you know, you worry about those things after the games are over and guys have graduated and the seasons are over and you look back at what you've done. But, I mean, I'm just very happy that, you know, we, those are important games to us and we know the importance to our players and to our fans and the alumni and the, and the school in general. And very proud that we can play well in those games. And uh, I, I didn't realize I had no idea, so I hadn't really thought about it. But uh, just very proud of our guys to be able to do that. And hopefully we can keep it up because they're, they're going to come in here on a, on a high, that's for sure. They always say anything can happen in a robbery game, but is that any more different than is that any, any Saturday? No, it isn't, but sometimes the, what's different is so many more emotions, I think, to get into rivalry games. And I think that's where you got to be careful as a player and a coach. The emotions are important, but they don't always win games. That's where I think sometimes emotions can help you or hurt you. You have to really, I think it's very important to keep those in line with still performing in the game and doing the things you do. And I think that's what happens. I probably mean in rivalry games, but because people are going to lay it out, they're going to do everything they can do. There's no doubt. Have you guys been able to get off to quicker starts the last couple of weeks? Was that just maturity and growth or something? And not a lot different. We're still doing I mean, we tweak a little things, but, you know, try to make sure. But not, not a lot different. It's just a matter of taking it. It's part of growing up, you know. And I just, you know, the first time I walked up, a little path or something. Sometimes I trip on a rock, you know what I mean? After about the third time, I learned that rock was there and I quit tripping on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just learned to, to have my mindset and understand how to approach a game mentally, emotionally, psychologically when you start. Some guys, when they're young, you know, they want to, okay, I want to do real good, but they get too high. But then I want to, I want to relax and do it. Then I'm too low. Then, you know, learning yourself and how to play and do those things, it's all part of a young football team learning to mature and, and find out who they are and, and where that comfort zone is so they can go execute. Do they play, I assume because they have such good quarterbacks, they play a lot of man. Oh, they play a lot of man. They do. Wilson and Taylor. Your oh, it's going to be huge. I mean, they, they get up there and put their hands on. They're very strong. They get in that hip pocket. I mean, they'll grab you, hold you, tug you. I mean, do what they got to do to play good man coverage. I mean, I'm not saying they hold. I'm just saying they, they get up on you, man, make you work. Make you work your feet, make you get off. And it's going to be a huge challenge. And Because uh, then they can get extra guys in the box and play the run, which you know you're going to want to do that to Dalvin. And, and uh, But hopefully we can throw the football and keep great balance. That's why I love to have a balanced offense. Do you think you have the receiver? It's really been a, going back. Kelvin's the only one that's kind of really had his way with Florida quarterbacks in the last four or five years. 
Do you think we have guys on this team that can beat these matchups? I'm hoping so. <laughs> I'm hoping so. We're going to try and have to coach them up. But, but it's going to be tough. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some. That's the thing about it. I mean, when you play good players, that's the thing you don't realize. you got to be willing to say, okay, they got that one. we got to go to the next one and keep going and, you know, and keep the pressure and making them make plays. But don't do that. I mean, it's going to be a huge challenge. Hopefully we'll make enough plays to do what we need to do. But that's going to be a huge part of this football game. And exciting might be for Are you interested to see how Nancy <clears throat> and Alton? I am. I am. I am. Those guys, it's, it's another step in a big situation, a great team, a rock, you know, all the things that go with this, but it is huge. It's another step for them, and I'm anxious to see how they accept the challenges and how they practice and go into the week and you know, all the things I just talked about mental, mentally, psychologically, you know, physically, emotionally, all those things are going to be huge factors for those guys doing it. And then for all the young guys in their team, too. Jim, I forget what, what Coach said, um, but one Coach said he thinks there was too much hand fighting and they let, they let too much go with cornerbacks and receivers. Do you, do you do that as well? And, and, and I'm going to tell you what, I think it makes – the rules in college, I think, make it hard for officials. I really do. I, I think they make it hard for officials. You know what I mean? I think that's why the NFL does what it does in its rulings and the secondary to make it very clean and easy to call. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, as an offensive coach, yeah, you want to say that. It makes, and we got – you know, like I say, we got Big McFadden and those guys that can get hands on guys and do that. But I think – you know, there's – now I see some guys will have a jersey tug that's pulled all the way out. Well, he's not restraining Then why is he holding it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, that, it's got to be restraining or he wouldn't be holding the, holding the jersey. You know what I'm saying? But and then, well, it what didn't affect the play. And it, but in and, and the defense of the officials, it's an extremely hard thing to call because of the way the rules are. You can hand and, and make contact down the field. <clears throat> I think they probably do need to be cleaned up a little bit. That's one of the things I would say. I think it makes it tough. I do. You mentioned good defensive lines are ones that are balanced. Is that why your line – been so great this year. It's well, when we got everybody healthy again, yes. When you got Naughty inside, can get pushed. Christmas can move. And then you get sweat, then you get burned. Now you got Pew rushing. You know what I mean? Demarcus Walker. I mean, it's been Demarcus wherever we got him inside or outside. When you can't just double team or slide to a to wherever the big player is, that makes a huge difference now. Huge difference. Demarcus had two plays last year against Florida when they were trying to threaten and score, and he came up with some big stops. I mean, what is it that you've seen from him over the last year where you kind of expect those? I think he knows who he is as a player. He knows how to handle those moments, and he's able to recognize those moments. Again, the maturity of knowing, like I say, you, there's certain moments in the game that certain players feel that this, this momentum's changing. You know, sometimes you just worry about doing your job. Then you have that control. It's like when you coach or do anything else in your business. You're more aware constantly of surroundings as you get used to what you're doing, get better at what you're doing, and feeling the momentum times and knowing that you know, I, I, I not that. I do anything different, but I got to play my best right here. I got to be on top of what you hope you do every play, but just understand to be your best at the right times, and that's what I think he does a great job of. Jamon Demarcus, uh, you know, he's not shy to talk about his dislike for Florida, Miami, all the rivals. I think last year. I don't think he. I don't think it's dislike. I think there's a respect there that he knows and how important it is to play well against them and have pride against them. I, I think he respects them. We talk. We talk. He respects those guys and knows those guys very well. When a player like that is so adamant about the rivalry and, and, and winning and wanting to win. What does that do for players behind him? Well, I think it shows the importance of it and how important it is to some of your senior leaders or older guys on the team that, hey, this is important to them, so it needs to be important to us. And I think that's what leaders need to do. You know what I mean? And, and never disrespect your opponent. But listen, Florida's a great football team. They have great history, great tradition, national championships. I mean, you know, what Steve did down there years, I mean, what Coach Spurrier did down there made him a legend. Urban was able to come in and win some games. Now Jim's doing the same thing. It's a great program. I mean, the history of what Steve built there and did is, is tradition. And we're going to have some before that, but really Steve started the whole – uh, to get them to that next level consistently and all the things they did. And, uh, you know, they're great. It's a great rock. We're, we're lucky to be a part of it. Can we have an update on any of the injured guys from the game? Uh, yeah, I mean, just not a lot. Most of them, I think, you know, who, who you got in particular? Give me a. Uh, Westbrook and Bruce. Right? I will have to wait and see if they're getting protocols and what they're doing now. Both looked, okay, I mean, better. Uh, one looked, I mean, I, I think they said AJ looked a little better than that, but you, don't, you still don't know. I mean, that's, that's protocol through all that. And Marshall, I'm not seeing. Uh, good, just sore. It's got, a, you know, it's got a little bruise right there, and I think he'll be okay. It, it, I think we'll have to wait and see as the week goes. But I mean, we'll probably hold him down a little bit today and just give him a limited work, and he'll be out there practicing. But then we'll just, he should be ready to go. And Jacob Tew didn't play, but he. I get protocol, but they said look really good from everything this weekend, so we'll have to see. I get yeah. That's that's all. Those things are so technical and all that stuff for those doctors that I don't even want to attempt it. <laughs> Marshall, by and large, you've had good quarterback play against them while you've been coaching. Maybe. The game in Gainesville in 2011 with EJ, and maybe the first half of James in 2014, but for the most part, your quarterbacks have played well, um, and theirs have struggled. So, what part of that in this current streak do you think that's played, and 
Well, I think any time in big games that are close, the guy who touches the ball all the time is, is, is crucially important, and he has to make good decisions. And even if he's not making tons of plays, not making mistakes, just getting your team in the right checks and doing the right things he has to do to give you a chance to be successful. But any time the quarterback play in, in any team is extremely critical, and hopefully we'll continue this weekend. And this guy's been doing it every year against pretty good defense. Right? Well, they, we, yeah, they're a good defense now. They're as good as anybody we play year in, year out. I mean, they do a great job, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to do it. So you talked about the 85 scholarships, the attrition now with all the games. Do you wish maybe the, the rivalry games were earlier in the year just so you get everybody's got a shot? Or well, I think I think that. And I think now with conference <coughs> championships, now we, you know, we talked about that. I mean, if you open up with those games, you know what I'm saying? And and because uh, when you go in and you play these games and you emotionally get up and you have to turn around and play a conference championship game the next week and then you have the playoff bid on, you know. There's something to be said for that, but I don't know if we'll ever do it. I mean, it's just too much of a rivalry weekend. There's just too many games, too many places. But, uh, no, there's, there's merit. If you think about the practicality of what you're saying, there is practicality to say that would be a good thing to do. Did you ever envision where the rivalry game wasn't as important as the conference championship and then getting into the playoffs that some of the rest of starters mm -hmm. even have to dabble about that yesterday? I, I can't because when you can say I'm going to rest my starters and I can take a loss to get – you're talking about four teams. You can't take a loss anywhere. I mean, I, in my opinion, I mean, that way. I, and I couldn't see your fan base ever accepting that. You know what I mean? But the importance of the playoff now, I do see what I do see, which is scary to me, is that not that I'm saying conference championship has to be what goes into the playoff. But, you know, people just worry if you get in the playoff, it's okay. And, and kind of rival putting that above winning a conference championship. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of that's weird to me because growing up, it's about winning your league or winning your division or winning your comp. You know what I'm saying? I, but you know that's the world we're in right now. I think that that seems, I guess, different to me. You know what I'm saying? But I understand it because that's the ultimate prize is to win the national championship. What kind of strides you seen Rick Leonard take from earlier this season to now? A bunch, and I think you know just sitting back and watching. You know, like I told when DeAndre got his shoulder banged up, I said some of the best things that happened to him when he stood back about for a couple of days in practice here and then we rested him, let that shoulder heal early in the season. Just standing back there by me and seeing things through my eyes. Like I tell you, when you call a game, you got to see it through the quarterback's eyes. Not what fans that, well, I can go do that, I can do that. Well, I can, no, no. What can that quarterback do? What does he see and what can the right tackle do? What can the left tackle It's not about what you want to do. It's about what they're capable of doing and get the max out of without having a major mistake or things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? You pick your, you, then you take chances. But I think it's important for a player sometimes to see through a coach's eyes. Because seeing through a player's eyes and a coach's eyes is two different eyes. It's like even these commentators on TV that are ex-great players that have never coached, sometimes they, I, I, can't, I, can't, I laugh. It's, it's easy to say it as a player, but, it, but and everybody takes their because they play. Go, let them coach for one year, and I'll bet they, talk, I bet they don't even sound the same. They, they won't even talk the same, I promise you, when you see things. And I think for a player, like Ricky got to step back and just see things and watch the first team work and listen to Coach Trickett, you know, instead of being with the ones and taking more reps and just resting between. And then DeAndre, when he stood back there with me, and just, all right, and I, and I pointed out so many different things, even with the receiver, why I was upset with how he ran the route. Well, you know, and that's your buddy. You've got to get him right. And why the quarterback here? And why the tackle here? And when they start seeing all those things, it makes them – sometimes stepping back, as I say in basketball – here's what's funny. I don't mean to get on this rant, but in basketball, a guy's having a tough game. What do you do? Say him for about five minutes. He sits there on the bench, watches the game, put him back in the game, he'll go play well. Do you ever do that in football? And I'm a coach. Don't ask me why. We don't ever do it. Think about it. You know what I'm saying? And then you, it's just part of – it's not part of the game or the – so you set back as a – players sometimes and miss a practice and let the, see why the coach is unhappy about so many little things and how they can affect. And I think that's helped Ricky. I think it helped DeAndre and his growth and really taking the next step, all the little things they got to do. And he played much better this weekend, I think, because of it. Jimbo, with the... How we get on all that? That's a long answer to that one. Jimbo, with the rumors that are going to continue to be out there about schools that might be interested in you, are you having recruits calling and asking you? Or are you no, I mean, I'm, I'm very, I'm always going to be up front again. I'm not going to comment on those things, but I'm very up front to those guys, very personal, would never do anything to tell them that, and I'm, I'm very direct in, about what's going on. I, again, I say that again, I'm extremely I'm happy at Florida State. Let's take a question from Matt Baker. Matt? Always be honest. Hey, Jimbo. Hello, um, Matt. Obviously, since you took over at FSU, you guys have had, this is a rivalry with the Gators has been fairly one-sided. What do you attribute that to? Our players and coaches doing a really good job. 
our players playing really well and our coaches doing a great job of coaching and getting ready for the game and you know hadn't then hadn't been fortunate at the right time in the game you know i mean they've they've been some dynamic games been some super games they've had some great teams we've had some good teams and and we're just you know very fortunate to play hard and our guys and players and coaches have done a great job I'm going to ask you too about George Scarlett, uh, 25 there running back. What's your impression of him? He's kind of gotten a lot better for the Gators as the season goes. We recruit the heck out of him. We like him now. Big, strong, fast, physical. You know, put like run into the size of running back. 5'10", 5'11", 215, 18 pounds, 13 pounds, whatever it is right in there. That body that has quickness, size, power, change of direction, strength, catches the ball. I mean, he's a really, really good player. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking with Scarlett, I know he was a guy that – Toward the end of his recruitment, was looking at you, Florida, and Miami. What do you think it was at the end that made him go with Florida? I mean, was the fact you guys already set it running back? You'd have to ask him. I, I, I could. I, I don't. I can't answer for somebody else. You'd have to ask him that. But it's sad he did. I wish we'd had him. But it's fun watching. I, I say that. You say it's fun watching. But it is. Well, I like watching those kids. These guys you recruit. You know, I was recruiting the right guy. At least I was recruiting the right guy. That guy's a heck of a player. Happy for him and the success he's had. What do you think that kind of stand? I mean, I know Matt kind of asked you about that already, but. What growth have you seen from him and, and, and the time you've been able to watch him? Well, I don't get to see him a bunch now because there's not a lot of teams we play that they play. Just, it, you know, I catch them a couple games here and they get to see the season and I'm not studying him a lot. But, I mean, obviously, just the maturity in the offense and the size, speed, and, you know, speed of the game. And he just he, – we, we thought he was going to be a heck of a player and he turned out to be a heck of a player. And when you play in a team that is so dynamic on defense and so strong, I think that turnover special teams are magnified the game. Oh, because of field position. There's no doubt. And they, they win a lot of games that way. By, by winning that field position battle and, and all those phases. We have to cover better, we have to return kicks. Uh, their punter kicks it so daggone high that uh, you know, they do a great job in return. We gotta do a good job on our end and we're gonna have to move the football. Even like I say, you're gonna have to win, but if you don't score points, picking up first downs and changing that field position is gonna be critical. Anything you can do in the turnover wise other than just fundamentals and turnovers? Well, we had the thing, we had had already turnovers. We've had two games, we've had eight turnovers, had what, 12 or 14 on the year. I mean, uh, Dalvin never <coughs> fumbles. I mean, he's gotta keep the ball high and tight. He had to tip down slightly. Did see a guy got pulled, and DeAndre was throwing the ball away and didn't throw it far enough. And uh, just got and Noonan got to keep his eye on the punt. But we've actually been really, really good turnover wise this year. And uh, it was a shame that that happened right like it did because they were all off plays. You know that we were driving and scoring and doing things. Speaking of special teams, Brian Burns had the block punt. I think he came really close to another one or two. Is that something that he's good at naturally or something? He's, he he's good about everything. I mean, he's a natural player, and he's so long and athletic and smooth, and he's doing his job. I mean, he wasn't a block, but he, he's he's taught to press. And if you get an edge right there, that wins. There's another guy getting long guys and get a hand up, and uh, doing it. It was it was very impressive what he did. We've had two block kicks in the last two weeks of guys just. I mean, not all out rushing, but you rush. You have certain guys that are always rushing, doing their job. And we've had two block kicks that way. Jimbo, you the <laughs> state championship is discussed a lot around here. Were you kind of surprised the press had got good and bad when you put that on the bull ring last year? I didn't even think about it. It's important to us. That's all it matters to me. I mean, it's, just, it's part of our goal. And we always say that the state of Florida is a dynamic football state. If you can play with Miami and Florida, you're usually in a national title hunter or one heck of a team across the country out of respect for them. And there's a rivalry game, so that's always going to be important. We play them both. So that's, uh, we think for our program to be where it needs to be, those are games that are extremely important, not only because of rivalry games, but because of the nature of their programs and, you know, and, and how what their programs are very well received across the country. That means you can play with anybody. I have a great respect for them. And like I say, the rings weren't a state championship ring. I've said that a hundred times. They were rings from a bowl game in which you get, you know, and you can even go to one able, one or lost bowl game, they still got big bowl rings. And that's, we had a, that's what it was. But one, uh, we put the goals in which we achieved on those rings. And that was one of the goals in which we achieved. Jimbo, Curtis has some acrobatic catches. Is he becoming the all-around receiver? He's getting better and better. He does. I understand how to set the hole, run routes, and do the things he's done. And he's really progressed and worked hard and became an extremely dependable, reliable guy with great speed, running routes and everything else. <coughs> Kermit's a good – I tell you what, Kermit's a high-character young man now. You talk about goes to work, even you get on him, whatever he gets that, he goes to work. He comes to work every day, does a great job in school, everywhere. He's a, he's a very high, high-character quality young man. But defensively against Florida, you guys have always, since you've been here, really done a really good job. I think four of the six games against them, you've held them to seven or less points. Is that a function, maybe that emotion that you talked about, that the defense is feeding off of that? I think it is. And I think offensively, when the game, we were able to move it and win the field position. But, you know, I think we've, we've been good on defense, you know, and, and, they, and our guys have played well and wanted to play well. And you, you, again, that focus and desire and stress of trying to do everything right on every play, and it, it magnifies in those big games, like you say, in some of those rivalry games. And, Hope we can, hope we can keep it up because we'll be ready to play.
Jim, I know we talked about uh, the coach asking, but do players ask you, or do you address the players about any of those coaching rumors? Nah, I just I just answered them and they go. Next question, please. All right, we good. We're good. Thank y'all.